द वे फॉरवर्ड इज थोड़ा बहुत बहुत स्वागत है मैं थोड़ा होस्ट हरजोत सिंह इस वेले सारी कंट्री बड़ी क्लोजली प्रेजिडेंट ट्रंप दी इम्पीचमेंट प्रोसीडिंग्स देख रही है Uh, as we speak, uh, December 18th, 2019, Wednesday, जिस वेले ये रिकॉर्डिंग हो रही है इस वेले हाउस विच वोट पै रही है टू अप्रूव द इम्पीचमेंट मोशन दैट हैज़ बिन ब्रॉट अज असी गल करा इस इम्पीचमेंट के बारे असी अज आमंत्रित किया है साढ़े पोलिटिकल कोरस्पोंडेंट श्री जैग राजपाल जी ने जैग थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर कमिंग टू द स्टूडियोज टूडे जैग सू दसो कि ये इम्पीचमेंट क्यों हो रही है इस वेल कितने पहुंची है एंड की इस आप देख रहे हैं अगे सर जो आई थिंक वी लास्ट स्पोक अबाउट इट इम्पीचमेंट स्टार्ट हुई सी ऑलमोस्ट दो टाइम महीने पहले अराउंड मिड सेप्टेंबर वेन द फर्स्ट टाइम द इनक्री स्टार्ट हुई सी अराउंड एंड ऑफ अक्टूबर फॉर्मल इम्पीचमेंट प्रोसेस प्रोसीजर्स गाइडलाइंस वे इस्टैब्लिश्ड दैन इंटेलीजेंस कमेटी एंड द जुडिशरी कमेटी है दो कमेटीज जी है उन्होंने दे टुक द इम्पीचमेंट इन्वेस्टिगेशन टू द नेक्स्ट लेवल एंड फाइनली सम आर्टिकल्स ऑफ इम्पीचमेंट वे ड्राफ्टेड बाय द जुडिशरी कमेटी चार्जिंग द प्रेजिडेंट ऑन टू पॉइंट्स एंड वो दो पॉइंट्स जोड़े हैं अज हाउस वोट करेगा जी जैक जी असी उन पॉइंट्स के बारे जाइए उस तो पहले तुम एक बार सू फिर साढ़े व्यूअर्स की करके दसो कि ये इम्पीचमेंट की चीज़ है सो इम्पीचमेंट इट्स इट्स अ पार्ट ऑफ आर इट्स रिटन इन आर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन इट्स अ मैनर इन विच यू कैन रिमूव द प्रेजिडेंट ऑफ यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स फॉर एनी हाई क्राइम्स मिसडिमीनर्स uh things like bribery or treason that's how it's listed in the constitution mm-hmm. the sole power to impeach the president lies with the congress mm. so as we know our government is a three branch government mm-hmm. it's a co-equal branches mm-hmm. but the power to impeach the executive of the uh, uh, head of the executive branch which is the president mm-hmm. lies with the congress Mm-hmm. so all this started with this call on 25th of july when president trump had with uh, president of ukraine mm-hmm. and other which there were kafi concerns did he somebody i see there was a whistle blower who said that he was very concerned in which the manner in which this call was conducted oh mm-hmm. call no like a investigation start hoya si and it led to several investigations mm-hmm. many other uh, testimonies happened mm-hmm. many other committees of the uh, congress got in wall mm-hmm. and it finally culminated with these two articles of impeachment against the president assi tode to thoda hor janna chahange hun jab de articles आइडेंटिफाई किए गेन ड्राफ्ट किए गेन तो हूँ की प्रोसैस है हाउस इस पर वोट पाएगा उस तो बाद दस दैट लीड टू रिमूवल फ्रॉम ऑफिस और नो इट्स नॉट रिमूवल ऑफ ऑफिस सो हाउस इम्पीच एंड दे विल मोस्ट लाइकली इम्पीच हिम टू नाइट बिकॉज द डेमोक्रेटिक पार्टी हैज़ इनफ नंबर ऑफ वोट्स यू रिक्वायर ए सिंपल मेजोरिटी टू पास द इम्पीचमेंट आर्टिकल्स सो दैट्स वॉट इज एक्सपेक्टेड टू हैपन टू नाइट and once the house impeachment happens then the case goes to senate for a trial hmm. so this is like a house is like an indictment mm-hmm. a grand jury doing an indictment doing some in preliminary investigation and doing some formal charges mm-hmm. equivalent of that and the actual trial is done by the senate hmm. in which the chief justice of united states he is the presiding officer mm-hmm. uh, unlike the vice president which on a normal course uh, who presides on the senate proceedings mm-hmm. and the senate in the uh, trial hundi hai ki outcome of that can lead to the removal of the president if he is convicted out of that process if he is found guilty of if, uh, on any of the charges that's correct yes the mm-hmm. difference being that for a senate trial for him or the president to be held guilty of the charges mm-hmm. threshold is much higher you need two thirds majority of the votes mm-hmm. of uh, the senators to say yes mm-hmm. we are convinced mm-hmm. that the, he should be convicted of following articles mm-hmm. so sanu daso ke ki charges hai ke president trump ke khilaf is wale so there are two charges that are leveled against him mm-hmm. first is uh, abuse of power Mm-hmm. and the second one is uh, obstruction of congress mm-hmm. uh, very interesting you know it all this whole process started with uh, the call with ukraine uh, discussion and the whistleblowers complaint also was that there was a 
very concerning quid pro quo involved. Mm -hmm. um, then that's how the investigation started. It led to some discussions on that probably it's bribery cases are involved as well. Mm -hmm. But finally, when the House finally thought through, debated, investigated all the issues, took into consideration all the testimonies and various other political factors which are under play, mm -hmm. uh, I think they said the, the key article is abuse of power. That mm -hmm. means he has used his office mm -hmm. in a manipulative way mm -hmm. to his advantage. Mm -hmm. uh, and the second one is that he has done an obstruction of Congress. Mm -hmm. which means given Congress, which has the authority to do impeachment, mm -hmm. he was not very supportive of it. Mm -hmm. He obstructed the conduction of Congress to conduct the business of impeachment, mm -hmm. which in a nutshell, that's what it means. So when they say abuse of power, so what exactly is the charge? How has he abused his power? So this is where, you know, it's a, it's a very um, litigious uh, reasoning going on back and forth. But if we step back and look into it, you know, impeaching any president at any point of time, it's a very solemn, sober activity. Mm. It's a very uh, disastrous action that you're taking against the executive of the, um, uh, of the White House. Mm -hmm. So the charges that were leveled was that maybe he has tried to leverage the president of Ukraine mm -hmm. to put some dirt on his political potential rival, Joe Biden. I understand there was uh, some uh, 400 million approved uh, to be given uh, to Ukraine by the Congress. And uh, he it, it's alleged that he withheld uh, that money as against uh, uh, the declaration uh, of an investigation by uh, President of Ukraine against uh, Vice President Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden. Is yes. that so? Yes, that's the allegation. The, the allegation is that Congress had approved, Department of Defense had approved, State Department had approved some package as well. Mm -hmm. So altogether, it was $391 million worth of package which was to be delivered to uh, Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And there were some significant delays in the release of that package mm -hmm. uh, to uh, Ukraine. Now, keep in mind, anytime Congress, which has the authority to release these funds to any country, not only Ukraine, the mechanism of how the money will get transferred, that's conducted by the White House. Congress does not say, okay, here's a check and Ukraine take it. Mm -hmm. So it has to go through White House, which is the executive body of that. Mm -hmm. So in that execution of the release of funds, mm -hmm. why the delay happened, maybe it was intentionally withheld, mm -hmm. that is what the uh, investigation was there's about. A, and there's, an, uh, there's a delay, alleged delay of some 55 days, right? Yes. And, and what is the uh, obstruction of uh, Congress charge? So obstruction of Congress is that when they started doing the investigation mm -hmm. of, based on these allegations, mm -hmm. They asked for, they subpoenaed many things from the White House. Mm -hmm. I want this uh, documents, I want uh, transcripts of so-and-so calls between your various staff, aides, and so and so forth, mm -hmm. senior advisors. Mm -hmm. um, President Trump, very thoughtfully thinking that he has done nothing wrong, mm -hmm. he said that this is a sham process, mm -hmm. so I'm not going to support it to begin with. Mm -hmm. His viewpoint was that I've already released the transcript of the call to public. It's a very straightforward call. Mm -hmm. um, half the people, 50-50, are saying there's no concerning thing that happened in the call. Mm -hmm. So it's a sham process, so I'm not going to support it. Mm -hmm. Sari uh, country is issue per cafe divided hai. mostly uh, party lines are divided hai. but asi aaj gal karange apne community members nal eh janange ki is de upar unna da ki vicharan ek choti ji break de baad tusi vekhde raho the way forward the way forward is toda fir tu swagat hai main toda host harjot singh aaj asi gal kar rahe ha President Trump the impeachment the. So, asi break the jan tu pehla gal kiti si ki asi uh, a country very divided is issue te. Te aaj asi apne community members nu puchange ki o oh, is issue bare ki feel kar den. Today we have with us uh, Mr. Prithvi Thakuria, who is a senior business executive uh, from Boston, and we have Mr. Gushet Singh Gill, who is also a business executive from California. Mr. Thakuria, Mr. Gill, you're both very welcome. Uh, Mr. Takuria, 
How do you see this impeachment uh, presently the country is undertaking? I think that, as you rightly pointed out, the country is really divided, right? And I, and I feel that we shouldn't have been in this position in the first place. The reason being, if you look at the background and history of this whole impeachment, correct? Mm -hmm. One is the inquiry is not the organic outgrowth of serious misconduct. It has been an orchestrated campaign right from day one since Trump took office. Mm -hmm. If you can imagine, just 27 minutes after the president was inaugurated on January 20th, 2017, the Washington Post reported that the campaign to impeach President Trump had begun. <clears throat> Thereafter, Democrats introduced four separate resolutions from 2017 uh, to 2018 seeking to impeach him. Mm -hmm. This was way before the, the Mueller or the Ukraine investigation that started. Mm -hmm. So these acts totally act discredits the impeachment process that we're in today. They were basically chasing fire without smoke from the outset. Then comes the Mueller report and there was no collusion or wrongdoing. And that was a bust as well. And finally, the Ukraine transcript on which they lashed their hopes mm -hmm. are falling apart as well. But thankfully for the Dems, the IG report came much later or else it could have been even worse. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Gill, how do you see this whole situation? Yeah, you know what, um, on, on one way, I agree with Mr. Takuri. I mean, you know, the talks about impeachment started right after the inauguration, and I think it's been uh, it's been spoken about it throughout in the media and things like that. But, you know, what talks about impeachment was uh, always in, you know, in the making for uh, even President Obama, who, who was there for eight years. I think it's um, uh, uh, more than just the talk about impeachment. It's, it's the, the conduct of the president, which is questionable over here. Um, you know, uh, Mr. Takuri speaks about... Uh, the Mueller report, and there was nothing, there was no finding in there. However, you know, I actually disagree with them because uh, I think that what Mueller report also cited is that they did not exonerate the president. That means that they did not give him the clear chart. And he also specified Mueller, Robert Mueller was, um, you know, in today's day and age, unless and until there is con conclusive evidence in the report, he cannot actually name the president in the report. However, he did not even give him a clean chit. So there was obviously smoke, and there is no smoke without fire. Now, when you speak about the conduct of the president in pertaining to the Ukraine investigation and, and so on and so forth, the transcript actually specifies that there was quid pro quo. And, you know, he has released the transcript, and that is the reason we are over here. So, you know, I also agree with Mr. Korea that the country is extremely divided. Um, there are, you know, extreme emotions playing at this point of time. It's obviously not good for the country. Um, but, you know, if you look at the bigger and broader picture, I mean, Donald Trump has done more harm to the country than it has done, uh, you know, in, in favor of the country, whether you look at the international politics, whether you look at the trade, whether you look at domestic policies, and whether you look at his team, who has, you know, most of his important cabinet members either have been pushed out or resigned. So, so that is just my perspective on things. You know, Mr. Gill, uh, impeachment is 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 a is a legal process, right? And uh, is a constitutional process. And there are particular charges uh, in this situation, in this case. You can't impeach a president for being a bad president, or, or you know, uh, for the reasons that you don't like his policies. And you can't exonerate a president just because you like the president or he's, uh, he's bringing a great economy or whatever. What we have to look at are the individual charges which have been brought in this particular case uh you know, the, the Mueller report might have something to do, uh, you know, with, with the investigations, but the two charges that we have uh, before us, right, his withholding aid to Ukraine for, for his uh, own political reasons and obstruction of Congress. So, M Mr. Takuria, do you think uh, those two charges hold any water? I don't think so, because, see, I mean, if you have followed the impeachment closely, right, and if you have gone through all the witnesses that the Dems and the Republicans, both parties, brought, I mean, the first one, right, I mean, holding back information or, you know, um, hurting uh, or obstructing justice, right, by not disclosing information. But President Trump was the first one who said, you know what, you want to see the transcript, here it is, and he kind of 
uh, displayed it to the you know whole wide world, right? So and there was nothing there, and there was a lot of spinning that took place around that. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Then number two, to your point of holding, uh, you know, aid to Ukraine yeah. now, and that people talk about quid pro quo out there. Now, if you look at the transcript and if you look at the timeline of the event that took place. Mm -hmm. Ukraine eventually got the f funding mm -hmm. without any official investigation being initiated by the Zelensky government. But, but not before uh, Congress intervened. And not, not before really, not, public. And not, and not, 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 not really, not really, though. I mean, if you look at the entire timeline and if you have a, you know, uh, open-minded thing from all the different sources, right? Mm -hmm. So sometime in June and July, whenever this first phone call took place, mm -hmm. President, I mean, Ukraine as a country, I mm -hmm. mean, has been known to be uh, highly corrupt and all the issues that they've had, right? Okay. And right from the get-go, President Trump from 2017, he kept on saying that I'll be very, very careful of who gets our uh, national aid because at the end of the day, it's taxpayers' money mm -hmm. and we'll make sure that it goes to the right hand. Mm -hmm. Now, the previous government in Ukraine, mm -hmm. who, which is very corrupt, as we all know. Mm -hmm. I mean, then Zelensky comes and he just wants to make sure that, you know, what Zelensky promised and was his platform to get elected, he kind of carries forward. I mean, he keeps his word on that. And and as part of the process, I mean, not him, but even the Congress had kind of slowed down the aid to Ukraine. But, but the important this, part uh, is this, right? Yes. The, I'm sorry, can, the, can I ask you something? Is, is, sure. is Ukraine the only corrupt country in the world? Or no, but the is there any other country other, other, with No, no, I'm sorry. It's yeah. a standard protocol. I mean, no, no, it, that's not the only one. There okay. are a lot of other countries. Like if you look at Pakistan, if you look at a few other countries where aid were withheld, mm -hmm. the same rule applied. It just wasn't Ukraine. Correct. So, so Harjot, um, if I may interject out here, and, and Mr. Takuri, and, 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 and I'm sorry that I'm interjecting out here, is, is only because, you know, the aid was approved by Congress. You know, the President of the United States had no right to stop it unless and until, you know, the Congress again votes on it. And the aid was not in terms of money or in terms of food or in terms of logistic. It was specifically for defense because there's a history of Russian aggression and the annexation of Crimea, which has happened and there were javelins which were, you know, um, the, I think short-range missiles which were supposed to be delivered to Ukraine. And, and, and you know, th there's no sense of corruption over there. No, so, so two points can I, can I just, no, uh, If I may just add out there something very quick, sure, and I'll let the other gentleman speak, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So talk about javelin, right? When Obama was the president, he and when Ukraine reached out to Obama and, uh, Obama's administration for aid, all they got were, you know, blankets and food and those kind of stuff, right? Trump, I mean, and during the entire Obama's eight years of tenure out there, Ukraine got nothing because whatever the reason, I don't want to go and give the political details. All I'm trying to, you know, steer clear is our facts, right? Mm -hmm. So during Obama's days, nothing went, no military aid was given to Ukraine. And then Trump comes along and he had one litmus test, a sniff test, saying that people, uh, countries who receive the U.S. aid has to prove uh, that they're doing the right thing and they're, these are all the attributes and checklists and Ukraine happened to go through the same thing and once it was a, uh, once he got the confidence from the leadership that they'll do the right things the aid was released even before the investigations to Biden or Burisim or whatever else took place so uh, that but, is not but, true because you know, the wind if of I can interject you know, the, the issue that comes over here and I think there I see both the points uh, President Trump has been releasing the aid for Ukraine in 2017 and 18. So this is not the first year the aid was released. So the question, I see on the, you know, the arguments on both sides, so I'll take the first side, that why has President Trump not objected to the aid being given to uh, Ukraine in 2017 and 2018? All of a sudden in 2019, how he was so concerned, even despite the fact that the corrupt government of Ukraine did not exist. So that's point A on the other side. On the, flip, point, yeah. on, on, on the flip side, you know, uh, to, uh, in terms of execution of the delivery of the aid, yes, it was approved by Congress, but I was talking to Harjot earlier on, Congress approves the aid, but Congress does not write the check. It has to be executed through White House. So during the poor process, of course, the White House has the entire prerogative to see what proposals have been passed, what kind of aid has been authorized, and do need to 
check a few things extra to make sure that the aid is being uh, given the right way, in the right manner, and so on and so forth. So in that due process, if it takes them 30 days, 40 days, or for that matter, 100 days, I don't think uh -huh. it should be matter. The, I, I think I, the, I, well, you, you're, you're absolutely right, but the, there is more at play than what meets the eye over here. You know, the, 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 the ambassador to Ukraine was fired because she wasn't playing ball. The ambassador of EU was, who had no business going into into Ukraine and, and work on these logistics, um, you know, all of a sudden became a center person. And then, except for the State Department, who should have been involved over here, you have this personal lawyer going and trying and digging dirt for, uh, you know, against political rebels. So so I, I get all the part, who writes the check, what is, you know, who's responsible for what. But you know what, I mean, so much is happening in Ukraine, and, and you're talking about a president who has been known to, to do things his way and, 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 you know, leverage his personal connections or leverage his business interests more than the interest of the nation. I mean, look at the hotel in, in Washington, D.C. Everybody is, is, is prompted to come and stay over there, and he writes back taxes for $10,000 a year on it. I mean, that's one more, more example. You know, his son-in-law is the head of you know, the international policies for Middle East and not the State Department. You know, mm -hmm. his son-in-law makes direct phone calls to Saudi prince, you know, on a first-name basis. I mean, what are you talking uh, talking about over here? Yeah, so Mr. This, Mr. Gill, Mr. Gill, I, I, I would like to jump in and I would like to say again, you know, imp uh, there are two charges here which, which we are discussing, right? And um, uh, you, you can have your uh, political disagreements or you can have uh, accuse uh, Mr. Uh, Trump of other misconducts, but Right now, what we, the country is discussing and what we are discussing are those two charges. And uh, I think we um, have this much of agreement. Yes, yes, uh, there was a delay uh, in, in release of those funds. The two arguments are whether it was done to, you know, uh, because there was corruption and uh, Mr. President had uh, the good faith, uh, uh, you know, endeavor to uh, the hold the funds till something was done about the corruption or did he do it because he wanted some political favor we have some witnesses and we have some evidence on that we will talk about that after a short break tonu milde ya ek chote ji break de baad tusi vekhde raho the way forward the way forward is toda fir tu swagat hai main toda host harjot singh uh, so, so before going to the break, uh, we said that we agree that there was a delay. Now, what we have to establish is what was that uh, delay because of, right? Now, uh, Mr. Prithvi, are you completely dismissing the evidence given by uh, you know, people like Alexander Vindman or Jennifer Williams, who, who are advisors and who have been involved in the process, and they saw some wrongdoing. What, what do you say to that? See, I have all the respect for the people who work for the government and for the country. Mm -hmm. All the, you know, officials from State Department. I think they all have the right heart in the right place. And I'm not here to judge anybody or the motives or whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. But as a layman, I mean, uh, you know, uh, and do I call myself myself a conservative? Let's make one thing very clear. I voted for Obama twice, right? Okay. And um, so for me, it's all about principle. It's all about the right thing. Uh, it's all Everything has to be black and white. So mm -hmm. all this bureaucrats, they have the right, you know, intention, the, the right heart, uh, I mean, the right base and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, when you go after impeaching a president, mm -hmm. is the most solemn duty that the House of Reps can do, mm -hmm. right? And it's a court of law, basically. Mm -hmm. And the way you'd go after any uh, criminal or anybody who are a felon, you'd want to do the right thing. And my, and my only objection is this, that what has come forward so far, they don't really all add up mm -hmm. to the... Uh, to the level of impeachment, right? Mm -hmm. So now people might disagree with his policies. That not that's not impeachable. Like you know, as, as the, I think someone rightly said, mm -hmm. you are you are you don't like his performance. That's not impeachable. You like mm -hmm. his performance. That's not impeachable, right? Mm -hmm. It has to really bubble up to the top. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's really happened. Now firing off ambassadors or whatever it is, that's at the discretion of the president. They serve at his pleasure, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, and they can be fired for whatever reason. 
there has to be no reason in the very first place. So those things are not really impeachable offenses. Is it right? I don't know. I'm, I'm sorry. Wrong? I don't know. I'm sorry, Mr. Takoria, uh, I'll seek a little cl clarification. So what you are saying, uh, something wrong has happened here, but it does not uh, rise to the level of impeachment. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm not saying that's wrong. What I'm saying is that firing, an, uh, you know, uh, an envoy mm -hmm. to Ukraine is, you know, it's not really an impeachable offense, right? No, I mean, but but there's a scheme the behind it. But, you know, that that's what the allegation I'm sure, is. I'm sure. My thing is, yeah, if if they find something, if they can connect all the dots and they can conclusively prove mm -hmm. that something, may, you know, something really bubbled up to that level, I'm all for it. I mean, you go for it. But so far, the evidence that has been put forward. Yeah, it's not there. I mean, it's not there. That's the thing that I'm battling I with. Think, I, I think I'll, 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 I concur with Prithvi, I think, a little bit over here. I think when you are driving a process like impeachment, where mm -hmm. the consequences are so extreme, you are removing the president of the United States, who's mm -hmm. elected by the citizens. Mm -hmm. You know, it should be conducted in a very impartial, unbiased fair manner, mm -hmm. backed by facts that are undisputed. And you think here the facts and, don't add up. And the eventual conviction, if and howsoever it may come, mm -hmm. it should be done in a manner which is beyond a shadow of doubt. Mm -hmm. Beyond. And I said, you know, in a very strong words, beyond a shadow of doubt, because you're impeaching the president. Mm -hmm. It's not a misdemeanor or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And until that time, the person should be held not guilty. In I, all these corners, was President Trump being held not guilty from day one, as Prithvi said, mm -hmm. people have been saying, you know, he should be impeached. Mm -hmm. Was this process done in an so impartial and unbiased Gale. manner? Mm -hmm. Probably not, because it's a rush job going on, because mm -hmm. there is uh, some political timelines being put into it. I, I understand. Mr. Gill, do you think the evidence adds up? So, so two things. One, what Mr. Jagbal and, and Mr. Kudia said, I, I agree with them on the process of it, but I disagree uh, with them on, on the, you know, on the evidence of it. I think that, you know, for all the depositions which who were called, you know, the people who work for State Department, the ex, um, uh, you know, the ambassador, the, the the lifetime diplomats, and and you know the uh, the EU secretary. Uh, I mean, there is evidence, you know, there's verbatim evidence which they called out in their depositions, which mm -hmm. adds up to this. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, this is this is abuse of power, mm -hmm. and and this is quid pro quo classic 101. So, so it, according to me, I think it adds up. I think they've followed the due process. If you think that they have tried to do it, you know, in an expedited way, yes, they have. Whether they could have done it even more properly, maybe, I don't know. But I think, you know, I agree with them on the process part of it, but I think there is a evidence, there's enough evidence. M Mr. Chakuria, you know, it's it's a difficult situation when, when both sides look at the same evidence and, and you know, uh, uh, derive, uh, de reach different conclusions. And I, I, I don't know what is the uh, solution for that. How do you see Rudy Giuliani's uh, role in this? It, was it fair for the president to use uh, his private attorney if it was, you know, just pure corruption or legit? He could have used FBI, CIA. He could have done it through the embassy. Why, why did he need a private attorney to do this? Right. So um, to that point, right, again, um, the, pres the president has at his discretion to use whatever he wants to use. I would um, disagree. I would disagree uh, there. He's not a king. I mean, I'm sorry. But, but if, if you look at the historical precedents, right, mm -hmm. whether it's Eisenhower, whether you look at Clinton, you name anybody, they've all used private emissaries to get job done. Now, mm -hmm. whether, um, and, and, th and it's not the first time that has happened. So that's part one, right? Mm -hmm. Part two is that Rudy Giuliani is a person. Was he the right person? I don't think so, right? The reason being, he's got a lot of baggage. <laughs> that, that's a different have, question. <laughs> that's a right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, mm -hmm. I don't think he had baggage, but I think his baggage now, after he associated with Donald no, Trump, I think he was America's mayor. No, no, no. I, I won't. I won't say that. Because I associated with Donald Trump, my biggest problem that I had was his relationship with those two Ukrainians who were arrested recently and the dealing that we that he had right i mean yeah i don't know the, came out, otherwise we would have never known about exactly i mean that, that's what i meant by baggage with the one of the greatest mayor <coughs> associating with uh, trump is not really a baggage i'm i was talking more about that particular angle right so 
I, I don't know. I mean, that, uh, that part, I'm not very sure. Uh, but uh, as far as the, you know, the avenue of using a private emissary, whoever that may be, whether it's Giuliani or Tom, uh, Tom or Harry, mm -hmm. that's the discussion of the president. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Uh, Takuria, I, I want to ask you, how do you see uh, Mitch McConnell's position that he is coordinating with the White House on what to do uh, at the Senate trial? Is that is that the role see, of the this Senate? This whole thing so political, right? I mean, like I said, this whole thing so political. When Nixon was impeached or when Clinton was impeached you know there was a political you know um, you know flavor to it but there were baked a lot of facts there were things that people could see okay this was something that was wrong you know this was something that the president should have done here everything's so political right i mean both the republicans and the democrats they are just you know uh, going by their uh, you know uh, ideologies right now mccall doing what he's doing at white house again i think is it right? I don't know. I mean, the, I think he's he's doing what he's supposed to be. I'm no, exactly you know, doing, exactly, I, he, you know he, he's doing exactly what the Democratic Party did in Clinton exactly. in Clinton exactly. impeachment. Tom Daschle was the leader of the Senate. He and his staff coordinated extremely and closely with uh, Bill Clinton, who was the president at did that they time. Declare it? They declared it. In fact, Tom Daschle was asked recently mm -hmm. that, did you coordinate? First, he said, I, I did not coordinate. And then his staff reminded him, sir, you di we did coordinate very closely with President Clinton. Mm -hmm. And then he had to redact and say, yes, we did coordinate very closely. Oh. Chuck Schumer, who says, if you go back to the videos on YouTube, mm -hmm. yes, he is, he's, right. he's shown in the video saying, we have all the rights to closely coordinate with the White House on each and every testimony and the witnesses and so and so forth. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think the tables have turned. It's a very partisan environment. Let's, and that's what is going on. Yes. Uh, Mr. Gill, what, what do you think about that? You know, I mean, I mean it's, it's, it's who says what and what, what portion of uh, the information you want to believe in. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was just tracking the news and, and they've already voted. Uh, they have achieved 260 votes needed to impeach. But however, it's on, on, on the lines of, uh, you know, the party and, and two against Democrats, which have flipped to Republicans. But, but you know what? I really, there is so much going on in today's day and age. I actually want to take a high road and, and, and when I look at United States, which is a land of opportunity, I think that, you know, the whole concept of being accountable is going away, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that is my biggest problem with this. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to see that if, if, you know, you do something wrong in this country, you are actually held accountable. Nobody's above the law. Mm -hmm. So that is my perspective. And I, I really don't want to get into, you know, what YouTube videos and you know who said what and who aligned with what with, with President Clinton and who's aligning with uh, with with this thing as a matter yeah. of yeah. one of the Republicans. Mr. Gill, we we understand that Mr. Takuria has some uh, constraints on time. Before we let him go, just one last question, uh, Mr. Takuria: How do you see? these very close associates of uh, the president, his advisor, his national security advisor, five people in total being convicted of uh, crimes, felonies, being in jail. How do you see that? I think that's, I mean, like I said, like Mr. Uh, you know, Gil said, right? I mean, no one should be of the law. If you've done something wrong, I mean, you pay the price. That's does, the does it show anything on the president being surrounded by these people? Or you think he's, he's I, oblivious of what's going around him? I mean, you are not proven until guilty, right? I mean, uh, I mean, so just because they did something does not mean the president did something, right? And uh, and until proven otherwise. Mm -hmm. And for the same, on the same uh, token, I mean, after the IG's report came out, Comey is of the world who were supposedly uh, innocent. Mm -hmm. is coming out on the wrong side now, right? So we, we just have to wait and see. I think we uh, have jumped to conclusions many times over uh, in this country in the last two, three years, right? From the Mueller report to, you know, uh, 29 minutes after swearing on the president and so on and so forth. So mm -hmm. I think we just hold our horses a little bit, let the chips fall where they might be, uh, where they might, and uh, take it from there. But mm -hmm. I totally agree that, you know, this country is really breaking apart. I think this political... Um, Impeachment is a, is a horrible thing for the country, mm -hmm. uh, and I think we should get a quick closure on this one. Yes. And the and last part that I'd like to add is that whatever we hear, there have been precedences in every uh, dimension of it, whether it's White House coordinating with the Senate or 
uh, the Dems uh, blocking witnesses. Mm -hmm. Those are nothing new. That's uh, that's kind of political game playing. You know, I mean, it goes on, right? So nothing new. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we will uh, know in a few weeks what is uh, worse, uh, the the political, uh, you know, uh, uh, act of uh, bringing in this impeachment or the lack of accountability, which some people are alleging at this stage. Mr. Takuria, we really appreciate your uh, taking out this time at the short notice. Uh, we wish you had more time, but uh, we will love to have you here again. Pleasure, absolutely, man. Harjo, thanks a lot for having us here, and thanks for the rest of the panel as well. Nice talking to you, gentlemen. You're welcome. I see Mildeya, a short break. The bath. The way forward is Tola Firtu Swagata, Ajasi Gal Karea, President Donald Trump, the impeachment. The uh, Jag, l l l let me ask you this. So the position that uh, Mitch McConnell has taken, right? Is that a fair position for the trial? Uh, you, you know, like I said, Joe, I think the whole process from day one has not been impartial, unbiased, and fair. Mm -hmm. um, the House process also was not fair, mm -hmm. and we expect the same thing at the Senate level as well. Mm -hmm. Like I was saying previously, uh, the position that McConnell has taken, that of close coordination, that's nothing new, you know. Uh, there's nothing written in the Constitution or in the Senate rules that no, I, I the disagree. Senate should do or not do. I would strongly and disagree because it says an impartial jury trial. They have to work as a jury. So a jury you, can't come in and say that this is what we're going to do. So if you take that into example, you know, if you take an impartial juror, how can the Senate be impartial juror? When you have the Kamala Harris, the Elizabeth Warrens of the world, Bernie Sanders of the world, mm -hmm. and all these guys who are running for the Democratic primary, and they are saying we need to oust uh, President Trump, what do you say that's to our number one agenda, yeah. and they are the ones who will be voting. I so hate they you. are not. What, uh, what do you say to that, Mr. Gill? Well, it's it's, it's you know it's, it's actually the, the other way around. Mm -hmm. I mean. You know, the whole reason we reached out here is because Donald Trump, we, we actually forgetting the point why we over here, here because uh, President Donald Trump was looking for dirt against his number one political rival. So so if, if he expects that his other political rivals are, are going to go down as, as fair in this thing, it's obviously not going to happen. But, 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 you know, they have the right to be there. They, they are senators. Mm. They, they, they have the right to vote. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I think that, you know, good sense is going to prevail in, in all the 100 Senate senators and they're going to do the right thing, mm -hmm. you know, but, but what I, I do believe in the process and I think the process will eventually uh, be extremely sound. Mm -hmm. uh, Jack, how, how, how do you see, uh, you know, uh, all, all these convictions about uh, President Trump? You know, I, I feel I think there's some very serious allegations that are against him, and there's some element of probably, I think, seriousness in there. Um, we just haven't seen or we haven't given it enough time. Mm -hmm. uh, my personal view, I think, is that uh, there's been a rush to come to a judgment mm -hmm. that has happened. Yes. And, and I think uh, we should have given more time to get a larger mandate of the country behind it mm -hmm. rather than a split, split country, which is what is happening right Mr. now. Mr. Gill, is that reasonable just because, uh, you know, you don't want, uh, you know, this process to go too close to the, uh, to the election, the general election, you are rushing it up. Something which is this serious, it, is that the kind of uh, seriousness it deserves? Yeah, but you know, again, and the flip side is that if, if the Democrats don't rush into it, the mm -hmm. Republicans are going to make a play that this is because we are in 2020, this is, a, this is the election year, and that's the reason Democrats are doing it. No, mm -hmm. it's the other way around. They're doing it because it's all over. They're doing it because they're doing it because there's something wrong over there. They're doing it because they're holding the president of United States accountable. Mm -hmm. So they want to do it before the Republicans call it, you know, Ukraine murder. This is the election year and this is the reason why they impeach it. So mm -hmm. you can, they're both sides of the coin. Yeah. But, you know, we talk about accountability uh, very much, you know, in this country, you know, we want to be, we want to hold people accountable. But there is a due process as well. 
So where is the due process in this, in this rush judgment to impeach the president? Whatever the process laid out in the Constitution of the United States and the depositions of all the witnesses and, and whatever needed to be done has been done. Now, whether you say it was an accelerated process, mm -hmm. I mean, if, if you, and Donald Trump knows it better, you know, you, you speak about business. Business decisions sometimes can take forever, but sometimes the business needs to be nimble and needs to evolve. Mm -hmm. So in this case, you know, the, the Democrats felt the need that they need to do it ASAP before the election year kicks in. And I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, there's the, there's the political angle into the due process, right, yes. which is itself is a contradictory to the due process argument itself yes. to uh, begin with. Jack, Jack let, let me ask you this. Uh, you know, there were, there were at least uh, uh, two uh, Republican uh, witnesses, uh, Kurt Volker and Tim Morrison, right? How do you see total failure on the part of uh, White House to cooperate with the process. That, that's one of the charges. But, but do you uh, not think that it is well deserved? You know, yes, I think, you know, should White House have done a better job of uh, supporting the process? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, should they have thought the process like this? No. Uh, I think one of the bigger problem I see, I think, which in terms, I think if you look in hindsight, mm -hmm. I think when President Trump nominated Giuliani, to run this whole shadow political process in Ukraine, mm -hmm. he should have done it officially. Mm -hmm. I think that could have solved a lot of problems, mm -hmm. whether or not people like Giuliani's personality or not. He should have said, here's my special envoy, mm -hmm. and presidents have done in past. Mm -hmm. If he had done so, a lot of this, um, I think, no, but, would have but, been but done. I disagree. I mean, if you, have, if you are a special envoy, you still need to be within the boundaries of the State, uh, the state Department. Yes, and, and they, they should have followed this process. But, you know? but, but Mr. Gil, my, my question is this. How should we see absence of Mick Mulvaney, right, uh, Michael Duffy, from coming and testifying in Michael Bolton in favor of President uh, uh, Trump because they have first-hand knowledge of what happened? If they are, uh, you know, uh, withholding something, the, the, there might be something sinister there. Uh, is it not fair to read it like that? What, what do you, you suggest? Know, there, there's obstruction of, of, of information from both sides. You you may call it that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I think Michael Bol Bolton, to be really honest, um, would have not spoken. It, according to me, he would have spoken uh, the truth, even though he was extremely hawkish and he has his own, mm -hmm. you know, the older baggage with him. But I think, you know, Michael Bolton being the national security advisor mm -hmm. and the, the security threat which Russia plays in, in this aspect of, of, of the impeachment, Ma I think he would have said the truth. Mr. Gill, we have ran out of time here. Thank you so much for participating in this spirited debate today. Uh, Jack, thank you very much. Uh, you know, more would be happening in the coming days and we have to, uh, we hope to have you here again and, uh, you know, enlighten us and our viewers on what's happening. Thank you very much. To see Vectero, the way forward. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair.